me, love me, love me, say you do. Ding, 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 ding. Let me fly away with you. Ding, 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 ding. For my love is like the wind. Ding, 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 ding. And wild is the wind. Oh, wild is the wind. You touch me. Ding, 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 I hear the sound of mandolins. You kiss me, dang, 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 with your kiss, my life begins. Oh, your spring to me. All frogs to me. Don't you know your frog itself? Hi, and welcome to the CM Kozumin Frog Extravaganza. Let me close the Wi Fi so we get better performance. Oh man, what an intro that was! We're becoming pros now, we're moving up in the world. It's big boy time in CM Kozuman land, and here we are with the amazing All Frogs Clade by Clade Mega Review Extravaganza Part 1. Thanks for coming this way. A lot of you will be longtime fans, but also I know that a lot of you will be newcomers, entranced by this amazing and Sisypian ordeal of my attempt to review every main group and almost every main genus of frogs out there. And because it's such a big, big podcast, we did a special intro. So before beginning, let me arrange the rules. Let me recount the rules of House Kozeman to you. Number one, please consider listening to these podcasts at 1.5 times the speed it makes me sound like a cooler person. Number two, please share this channel with all your friends or also leave a comment. It really helps me in the algorithm. And number three, please consider supporting me on Patreon.com. This enormous series of videos will be more than 650 pages long. So, you know, it's almost like I wrote a book for you guys. All out of the goodness of my heart because this video is not monetized this channel is not monetized but if you like me please consider donating to me on patreon.com slash cm oh no 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 go back i'm so bad with these machines also please consider contributing to Miss Atar Prometium on buymeacoffee.prometium.s She selflessly donated this intro video for this amazing segment and I can only help out by forwarding this address to support their livelihood. Buymeacoffee.com slash Prometium.s Patreon.com slash CM Kozeman Alright, let's go. Frogs are really cool and weird creatures and, you know, I could do a, an enormous series on the mythology and cultural significance of frogs as well. But we're just gonna speed run through them. Through ages they have been with us, these strange sort of humanoid but also sadly disposable creatures. They have a, got, got a sense of pathos to them, you know. I mean, they don't look like beasts. They don't have tails. They have four legs. And you could argue they're kind of human looking, so they're strangely relatable. Despite this, they're, they're most often seen as only one rung of the ladder above fish. So they're kind of disposable and in a weird way, easy to not care about. I mean, think about this. If you kill uh, a lizard 
or if you kill a mouse or if you kill a rabbit you know you would feel bad about it if you feel a cat it, it's almost next to murder in this day and age but if you like needlessly kill a frog it's almost like only one step above from killing a fish i mean in, in american high schools everyone dissected frogs and it was a very very cruel ordeal despite the f this fact that they look like people so there's like something very psycho spiritually tense about frogs and you know throughout the stone age ancient egypt ancient mesoamerica the middle ages and in the modern age they have been with us you know we like frogs they're curious strange memeable creatures and in this video we're just going to look at their biological diversity and you know frogs are enormously enormously diverse just look at these skulls i mean they seem very identical but if you zoom in who the fuck has a skull like this take take a look or, or like what's this you know you could have an entire series of horror movies with the main killer characters wearing these masks so they're very bizarre animals too and in different parts of the world they know achieved enormous diversity we used to think that they'd be like frogs toads and maybe tree frogs but the reality is far from the tro truth in fact there are multiple tree lineages of frogs and in each lineage they are like swimming frog like frogs toad like frogs and tree frog like frogs and there are also a lot of things that you can't even imagine but we're gonna see them all so let's move on in certain parts of the world they're also enormously diverse uh, such as madagascar south america southeast asia and a few other places so before beginning i'd like to also go over and chill out for the resources i've consulted for this enormous series of uh, podcasts your primary go-to resource is tim halliday's book of frogs a lifetime life-size guide to 600 species and this is like a really well illustrated with maps with drawings and like it really lays out the correct way to classify and study these animals so if you're just going to get one book make sure it's this book there are also lots of other books if you want to go deeper into the rabbit hole you could consider getting one of these local field guides especially if, um, for reptiles and amphibians if you look at the books about amphibians and reptiles of madagascar you get a presentation of all these weird frogs from madagascar same with new zealand and of course if you ever want to study anything about the reptile and amphibian life of australia you have to get the harold c cogger guidebook this guy is the og australian herpetologist there are many books about australian frogs and lizards and snakes around out there but cogger is the book you must get heck if you really want to go like financial domination and you know you want like oh yes queen take my money and just hurt me you can go to chimera books this specialist publisher of basically herptile based books working from germany and they got all the niche books at all the prices that just hurt you so good just hurt so good man i mean you can get specialist books about poison arrow frogs amphibians of bhutan amphibians of malawi amphibians of east africa and you know on and on so chimera is the place to go no don't go oh no what have i done anyway so chimera.de there are also lots of people who have become like chief contributor of images for these cool animals tyrone ping is a legendary south african photographer known for his amazing photographs of snakes lizards turtles and frogs of course and he has this book called a field guide to the snakes and other reptiles of kwazulu natal the thing about tyrone ping's work is that he really includes the background plants rocks substrate and like the overall setting with the creature so even if you see his photograph without the watermark you can say oh, i guess tyrone pink took this photo and that's like a the biggest honor a photographer could reach so i'm shilling out here for tyrone pink another cool photographer is Piotr nas Kreki. he has got this book called the smaller majority and this website called the smaller majority.com and he's just a prolificate photographer of frogs lizards insect life i mean look at this frog it's smaller than a goddamn fly where else can you see this shit only on Piotr Naskreki's website the smaller majority.com and also tyronepink.co.za 
There are also many other minor names who are not as recognized, but they have enormous portfolios, especially on sites like Flickr. So my shout out goes to Cesar Luis Barrio Amoros, specialist in amphibian photography. Visit him at this link on Flickr.com. And of course, there's this Amphibia Web Global online resource, and they basically list every species of amphibian out there. Frogs, Sicilians, salamanders, the whole lot. They got over 7,500 species of frogs on list. And it's just one of the amazing ways the internet impacts our life for good in these days. AmphibiaWeb.org once again, neither this side, nor this guy, nor this guy, nor this guy. Nobody paid me to do this. I just like these resources and wanted to share them with you. And of course, every day and every freaking week, I kid you not, people are discovering and describing new frogs. So this is an ongoing process. They revised the amphibian tree of life several times in the 30 odd years I've been alive. So if I like go to a coma now and wake up uh, like a few years later, I say, oh my God, <laughs> what happened to rain frogs? And they would say, we don't do that no more. We don't call them rain frogs. Uh uh, they've changed. And so this thing keeps changing on and on. And very recently, in 2006, there was a great uh, redescription and rearrangement of the frog family tree. And they, are, they kind of organized them into these family trees. And. In this talk, we are also going to study family trees, but they're not going to be this much in detail. And I will warn you in advance that, you know, sod all that, this is going to be a learner's version of the family tree. My aim is not to, like, achieve the latest final phylogeny of frogs, although I will use the latest resources, but there will probably be mistakes. So if any of you are, like, genuine OG herpetologists, please feel free to correct my mistakes. But my aim here is just to illustrate the amazing diversity of this group. I mean, you say frogs, you, you think like one animal, maybe like two, three varieties. Shit, no, there's like a, a world of diversity out there and we're just gonna see them all. So for our learner driver, simplified frog family tree classification scheme, we're just gonna divide frogs into three main groups. Archaeobatrachia, Mesobatrachia, Neobatrachia, Neo, and Neobatrachia is further subdivided into these groups. Helofrinoida, Australobatrachia, with a probable subgroup Myobatrachoidea under it, Hyloidea, Soglosoidea, and Ranoidea. Well, we're going to see these all. So, let's fucking go. All right, let's begin with our arrangement computer. <laughs> Archaeobatrachia is go. So this group, you know, recalls this kind of primeval, foggy, like Stravinsky music type of landscape. <laughs> All these like reptiles and amphibians flopping about. It's like the most ancient and basal and ancestral groups of frogs out there. This cool image is by Zdeniek Burian, by the way. And, you know, every day I just feel bad we don't have animals like this lying around or this swimming around. In fact, I would like my house to transform into a warm pool of water with things like this swimming in it. How cool would that be? But we don't live in that world. We live in the world of the Archaeobatrachians. And here we go with the Ascaphidae subfamily represented here by the tailed frogs, Ascaphus truei. And these guys are like atavistic tailed frogs. This tail doesn't disappear even when they're adults. You know, in other frogs, when they metamorphose and change from tadpoles into bitty bitty frogs, the tail kind of appears for a few days, then disappears. But no, these guys are born with tails. So they're actually like probably the oldest archaic group of frogs out there. Also in this group, we have the Bombinatoridae subfamily. Represented here by Bombina orientalis. This very archaic frog is actually commonly encountered in Europe. And I, re I remember years and years ago in a bike ride, bike ride to the forests outside Munich. I found a pool of these frogs and they were just so cute. You just take them in your hands and they're like this orange belly, flippity floppy, wet, moist, tiny man boys, manlets. So Bombina orientalis. And then in this group, you also have the Discoglossidae group, 
also sometimes class classified as Alitidae, the disc tongue frogs, represented here by Discoglossus janea. This is a more like mid and vanilla looking frog, but anatomically it's similar to these guys, but it just doesn't have the fleshy colors, I guess. And then in New Zealand, you have a far off representative of this group, represented by the Leopelmatidae family. And in this family, they're like very archaic. You see the, the big head, it, it really looks strange. I mean, she really looks like an ancient frog. And they live only in a few scattered places in New Zealand. These little islands where they kind of escaped from predators. And in this frog species, the males kind of go help guard their nests with an antibiotic secretion. So they're like, even though these are very archaic animals, I mean, we think frogs are archaic and... This group is even more archaic within frogs, but even in that so-called quote-unquote archaic variety, we have complex behaviors. And many of us think that, you know, frogs, like we joke about frogs being stupid or silly, but actually I think the stupidity is a kind of arcane, eldritch form of intelligence and they just perceive time differently or they just have different priorities. Anyways, moving on. Well, this was it for Archaeobatrachia. Ha 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 ha. If only the next two groups would were this easy, but they're not. We have moved on to the Mesobatrachia group. This group contains more interesting but also weird and ancient looking froglets, including this guy of the Megofridae subfamily. This is like a big subfamily within the Mesobatrachia Matrachia group. Represented here by Leptobrachium. This guy is super strange because like like, who else has his shoulder joint located so with practically in front of its jaw hinge and it's only a little distance away from the eye? So, really strange animal. Big head, small body, and kind of like running legs. You also have this uh, representative, Oreolalax, which has these like outsized arms and legs for some reason. It looks like a little gorilla frog, but because its name has Oreo in it, we're just gonna. Give it some Oreos. Give this guy some Oreos. Anyways, in the Megofri diet group, we also have Megofris, uh, this famous species with like these leaf mimicking spikes, fleshy spikes on its eyelashes, nose, and kind of like elbows and shit. Here's another species, Megofris nasuta, with these really sharp spikes. And these animals are like so aesthetic, so beautiful, well camouflaged. I like the fact that even their eyes have kind of like this angular rhombus thing. Like it's like almost a specific kind of animator designed them. And see how small the foreleg is and how neatly closed it is. And they, their heads are long and flat. Just weird, weird, beautiful frogs. Another Megofris species. Here they're, they're just fucking. But in many frogs the males are smaller. They're simps. And they just hold on for dear life. And never let go. Anyways. Moving on, Megofris is also represented by this gigantic comparatively form. These are all from Southeast Asia, by the way. This is from Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken. Megofris giganticus doesn't have the spikes, but it has the same body proportions and the same structure. And you see the head is really special. Like it's long and flat and the eyes are located towards the tips. So it works like a kind of forceps almost. And the tadpoles are like something to behold, really. I mean, they look like... For the lack of a better world, word, they look like women's uh, sanitary pads lined with little abrasive teeth. And I guess this helps them catch prey from the surface of the water. I don't know. But just look at this. And isn't it like bizarre? I mean, imagine you didn't know these and somebody designed this in a spec evo project. I would say I'm not so realistic, but okay. I mean, it's fantasy, but it's not. They are all real. Also, some of these Megofris tadpoles even look like little fish with like these dorsal fins, ventral fins. So they look like really bizarre, bizarre, bizarre things. Unless these were like scars caused by, I don't know, being entangled or in webs or something. They really look like little miniature sharks with these upturned mouths and who, who daddy. Another species in the Megofridae group is Brachytarsop. Fris intermedia. Now this guy tastes the fleshy tubercles 
and like he even has them on his back and sides and stuff and it's just purely aesthetic and i guess this is a mediterranean person because the hand is pointing towards the frog like look at this fucker another another species in this group is scutiger sicimensis scutiger is a big genus in this species there are many species of scutiger and this is from the i think this is from a part of india but if you're turkish the name is kind of unfortunate anyways moving on there are also like little varieties of this body plant so they're like warty but small xenophrys brachycolos tiny tiny jumping wart angle man and then the tadpoles also look like these megophrys tadpoles but they're only like smaller and they're just they're just bizarre and beautiful and in this group you also have the pelobatidae family represented by the spade foot toads pelobatis balconicus in europe independently evolved these uh, spade foot toads have these like little spade like things in their back legs so it helps them burrow there are also american spade foot toads but they're kind of different so we'll see them too there are also there's also this group pelodidae represented here by pelodites punctatus the spotted pelodites frog it's just similar to these guys but it's just kind of mid but i think these guys like if you look at the anatomy of the head and the long fingers that help it swim they're just there's something really interesting about them and moving on then you got the world's most famous uh, tripophobia frog uh, oops sorry pipa 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 in the pipidae family the female lays its eggs carries it, the eggs on her back the male fertilizes them then flesh grows around the eggs and it turns into a kind of living egg carrier and when the babies come out they hatch out of their mother's back and it's also a commonly known commonly known fact that in contemporary urban design uh, a road can accommodate 50 cars in and 50 people it can accommodate 100 people in a few buses but if they were using these frogs it could carry tens of thousands of people how cool is that and the face also looks like this which is also another bonus i mean look at this where flat man anyways moving on 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 also the skeleton of these creatures as well as the skeleton of all frogs is something to behold so if you know a, something a little about vertebrate skeleton anatomy you would know that in our forearms you have two bones well not in frogs they have been fused into one chopstick like bone same with the lower legs but to make things more complicated two bones in the foot have become fused and have become a kind of like a chicken shit chicken wing kind of thing which is like a third joint in the knee almost and then the foot also extends from on top of that and don't even get me started about the backbone the shoulders have fused with the vertebra in a kind of abstract key like shapes there are also these flanges on the sides and the the head is a flat arrangement of like bow like sheets i don't even know where the eyes go maybe here probably here but imagine trying to reconstruct this as a fossil you'd be dumbfounded and the hip extends like a paper clip all along the back of the creature and the muscles kind of like help it jump but they're anchored to this like big strut so it's it's really weird and also in this group the pipidae group is uh, our favorite little chunky experimental frog xenopus laevis so i kid you not like if a pregnant woman peed on this frog i don't know how they discovered this but if that happened the frog kind of started releasing eggs so for a long long time they use these frogs as pregnancy tests and even in my country before modern biotech tests came out people would say it kurba test oh get a frog test to see if you're really pregnant so all around the world there are colonies of these frogs escaped from labs and just thriving and vibing and living their best life and they're actually an african species so they're represented in a lot of african stamps and it's one of my side quests in this talk to collect as many weird and uh, quirky frog stamps as possible this one is from the Comor islands this one is from djibouti this one is from tanzania and this one is from malawi but looks like djibouti copied their frog traced it 
outright from Malawi. I wonder if this caused a diplomatic incident. I don't know. Also, these guys kind of like half-assed their drawing. You see, we know from the skeletons that there's a kind of second knee foot kind of thing in their legs. So they look like this. Whereas here, they just drew a butt baby, which is not true. Anyways, this is what the skeleton looks like. Xenopus laevis. You can see the strange key-shaped back uh, hip structure better. This guy is a little more conservative. At least it has like these vertebra recognizable, unlike Pipa. And like, what's even going on here? Like, have the shoulder blades fused into the skull? I don't know. And the tadpoles of this creature are also something to behold. They look like these ornamental, weird Amazonian catfish, except they have little legs. And, you know, if you're in the States or Europe or some parts of Asia, you know tadpoles, you would see them in, in ponds and stuff. But they're all tiny. But this frog has like a big tadpole, like a little fish, prehistoric leg fish. And I would just like to raise them in an aquarium. And, you know, wouldn't it be, it be cool if like these grew, but never turned into frogs, but you just kept them like this. Man, tadpoles are weird and cool. Anyways, in this group, you also have this smaller kind of, smaller variety of that frog basically represented by the genus Pseudohimenochirus this is Pseudohimenochirus merlini to be concise and one weird thing about these Pseudohimenochirus frogs is that they can actually sing while none of these other frogs can sing they, they're like they're so adapted for a life in water that they almost never leave water they're like purely aquatic in most cases but these guys somehow re-evolved. So, like, they started out as, like, probably, I don't know, but they kind of started out like these kind of, like, archaic frogs. They liked water so much that they started <laughs> changing and became fully aquatic. And they lost their singing ability. But this guy somehow remembered. They were like, remember what they took from you. And they re-evolved the singing ability in a kind of reversal of the ancestral condition. What makes this really interesting is that, you know, in evolution, we rarely see cases like this, where a character is lost and then regained just as easily. So maybe this was a recent adaptation, I don't know. But it's just fascinating. It's also fascinating to see these, like, little, like, unknown varieties of these, like, more popular animals. I mean, probably probably if you're like kind of into like animal memes and stuff you would have seen these frogs or these guys but these you know they take some digging to learn about so that's cool also in this group you have the rhinophrenidae family represented here by this amazingly beautiful my boy pursed lips duck face but covered with warts this is the mexican mole frog rhinophrenus dorsalis and we are recording in January 2023, and in this day and age, Google is really doing dirty to our boy over here. If you Google Rhinophrenus, or if you Google this family, it's listed as a plant. Fucking Google. How evil, how dare you? He's beautiful, and he's not a plant. He's all real, and he's a beast. Rhinophrenus dorsals, just look at this. This is how they sing. They emerge from their ground layers in a raising, rainy season and just sing, sing, sing. And mate and lay eggs and propagate themselves. Just look, I mean, I could just collect images of this frog all day long. They're just so beautiful. The Mexican burrowing frog, everybody. Look into his eyes while I remind you to support me on Patreon. Please, the link is in the video description. Anyways, moving on, moving on. The adventures of this for this frog is uh, seem to be endless. Not only did, were they slandered by Google, they're also, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, they had a misadventure one night, and it was reco recorded in a scientific paper, Rhinophrenidae. So there's one recorded case of this guy just wiping happily, but suddenly the El Cavron, this other frog came, Rhinella horribilis, this horrible, horrible man. Look what they did to my son. He raped him or her. I don't know. And this was recorded actually in a scientific paper by uh, Emmanuel Javier Vazquez and his colleagues, basically. Heterospecific amplexus between Rhinella horribilis and Rhinophrenus dorsalis. 
just so wrong. Let him go. And it's just, I mean, this really happens. Male frogs, when it's mating season, they just have one mode, go. And they mate with everything and anything. And we're going to be seeing more of those in the future. In this group, you also have the American spade foot toads, Scapo, Scaphiopus. There's many kinds of these frogs, and they're similar to those other spade foot toads we saw earlier, but they're American, and they're actually on a whole different branch of the Mesobatrachian family tree. And they're just, <laughs> look at these, I love them. Squishy, testicle boys, just hanging about, living their best life. And in this family, you also have the fossil Paleobatracus grandipes. I normally had the principle of never using fossil species in this podcast because that would complicate things so much. But for this fossil, I made an exception because it was so exquisitely preserved. And that's that for the Mesobatrachia group. And that's that for part one of the CM Cozeman frog extravaganza. This is just such an amazingly big... Uh, undertaking that i just have to split this into different parts and i will be seeing you all in part two before going please consider leaving a comment and subscribing to my channel have a nice day and see you in part two